Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bada habita fillah due to the many questions about who to take from should I take from such and such website should I take from such and such group such and such maktaba such and such uh, forum uh, da'i so and so and da'i so and so uh, it's I thought it was important to kind of address this issue with a little bit more detail as far as a criterion because these kind of points and these issues you have to really determine for yourself are you trying to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if so then you want to avoid those groups and individuals who have certain characteristics and characteristics of hezbiyah meaning that they call to partisanship and they call to sectarianism they call to split away from the jama'ah of the muslimin and they call to dividing and they have muafaqa or agreeance with some of the usul or foundation of ahl bid'ah or khalis or pure uh, a pure usul or pure foundation of uh, ahl bid'ah and so uh, one of the base char characteristics that you want to look for is that someone is calling to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the in accordance with the madhab of the Salaf in accordance with the minhaj the methodology of the Salaf Asali meaning how they understand the Quran how they understand the Sunnah and how they articulate that and how they practice that and how they preach that and even in regards to the thamarat of their da'wah, in the fruits of their da'wah. Is there benefit from their da'wah or do you see only chaos, discord, takfir, tibdi, tafsik, and chaos in infighting? So that's one thing you want to look. And uh, Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi, he mentioned, he said, da'wah to Ahlu Sunnah, da'wah tun, min kitabi la ila kitabi la wa min sunnati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ila sunnati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that the da'wah of Ahl sunnah it's the da'wah from the Qur'an to the Qur'an and from the sunnah to the, of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam letting us know that the da'wah of Ahl sunnah is built upon ikhlas sincerity and it's built upon, meaning in that sincerity is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that it's done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's a call to Allah. It's not a call to my shaykh. It's not a call to me. It's not a call to a bunch of groups that I, you know, get down with in Brixton or Birmingham or Cardiff or Reading or uh, Seattle or Tacoma or to Mashaykh in Medina or something like this. That's not the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah. Dawah to Ahl Sunnah is the Dawah to the book and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's calling to that and it's using principles and fiqh and guidance. So you want to look for people who are calling you to that bi-idhnillah ta'ala. They're calling you to khayr. Another important trait of what you want to look for is people who have good adab as well. Because the Salaf, many of the Salaf, they used to look to those who had righteous manners before to take knowledge from them before they even just took took knowledge they studied adab they studied how to be and if you look at all the nasus uh, all the text from the salaf al salih ridwan allah many of their books they wrote many treatises about adab and about manners and akhlaq so those are important traits that you should see in a dai that you're trying to take knowledge from or a sheikh that you're trying to benefit from or a markaz that you're trying to benefit for or a online university or online forum or whatever you should see good manners there should be something that's enticing you because the messenger salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi his sabil his minhaj he said ma min shay'in athqalu fi mizan mu'min yawm al-qiyamah min husnu khulq wa inna allaha yubghidu wa fa'sha al-bidhi he said there isn't a thing which weighs heavier on the scale of a believer than good manners and verily allah hates wicked and sinful speech another important 
thing you want to avoid that's going to give you should raise your antennas so to speak when you are listening and trying to benefit from du'at and and so on is if you see that and and if you visit them in their masajid and, and so forth and their halaqat and you see that their their gatherings are devoid of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that no one is remembering Allah there that in fact I, I'm going to relate this to a true story uh, we were in Hail Saudi Arabia with my Sheikh Sheikh uh, and we're just going to mention some of the players that were there Sheikh uh, Sheikh Saeed bin Halal half of the law ta'ala where is Tarah most of the Shabab were Saudi and uh, one Palestinian and myself and there might have been another American at that time and anyway so we're at this gathering Sheikh Faleh al-Harbi which was a scholar who some of the people built up in the past they said Allama, they said all these things and then they found out later that this guy had a lot of abatil you know he had a lot of false principles and he was very extreme in his tabdi very extreme and i remember about this gathering i sat because i didn't really know who sheikh fali was at that time you know i was new to saudi arabia and i was at this gathering and I asked a sheikh there who spoke English, mashallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him. He's still, he's a fantastic brother and he is al, and he's, he's a sheikh. And anyhow, I, I asked him, I said, uh, I pulled him to the side and I said, you know, so what about this guy? How is his knowledge? And he said, he's wasat. He says he's in the middle, but don't tell anyone I said that. That's what he told me. And what I remember about the gathering, anyhow, it was devoid. There was hardly a nus that Fale, Sheikh Fale was mentioning. I didn't hear any call Allah, call Allah. So all the whole gathering, he was just talking about Sayyid Kutub. For like, it was like a couple hours. We're eating and eating rice, chicken and camels and all kind of stuff. And the whole thing was about, there was, I don't remember a hadith or a nus from the book and the sunnah. So those kind of gatherings you do not want to immerse yourself with. I think Sheikh Aida Shemri was probably there too. Half of the law ta'ala. So some of the Mashayikh and Hail were there. Uh, another thing, trait you want to look out for is if they have a resemblance to the Khawarij. And this goes back to that no benefit in the gathering. If you see the only thing they're doing is making takfir of people. The only thing they are doing is attacking people. Then you want to stay away from those kind of gatherings and taking knowledge from those kind of people. Because refutations are based on the book and the sunnah and the understanding of the salaf of this ummah and they are based on knowledge they're not based on desire so it shouldn't be like he wasn't in our gathering you know we're gonna have to boycott him uh you know all the crazy insane things i've heard about in the uk but we have those same kind of insanity in uh, america as well but probably I i've never heard of some of the extremeness that i've seen and or i've heard in the uk but you want to be away from when people, their only thing they're doing, if they're not teaching you something, and if, in fact, in every lesson they do, they're mentioning, you know, people are having khutbahs about Shadid Muhammad, khutbahs about Muhammad Munir, khutbahs. This is something you want to be careful about. And I'm not defending Shadid Muhammad or even Muhammad Munir, but I'm, I'm just making the point that a khutbah, when the Muslims are gathered together to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, should be about the remembrance of Allah, something that's going to benefit you. I don't think it's going to benefit the general Muslims, and I don't think it's going to benefit anybody, especially when you've done extensive refutations on those individuals because you think they are mubtadi'ah. So you want to be careful. I just want to give you these tools. Be careful of anyone who is just, uh, the only thing they're doing is refuting. That you, and a lot of times it's refuting on desires and hopefully you have the tools to be able to look and be able to tell when someone is refuting based on solid strong knowledge and not just the twisting of the adilla because people will amaze you with evidence if you don't if you haven't done any talib al and you don't know istanbat you don't know any how to apply the text and so on you can get amazed so be careful of those kind of things but I, what I want to just uh, advise you is you want to sit as uh, Sheikh Abdul Razak Al-Badr he mentioned that you know you should be benefiting meaning it should benefit your soul that this Talib Al-Ilm, Talib Al-Ilm, Talib Al-Jannah this is how the Salaf used to say Talib Al-Ilm, Talib Al-Jannah seeking knowledge and seeking paradise if someone is not helping you to get to paradise they're not calling you to paradise but they're calling you only to have enmity and hatred for people who are closest to you who have really the same usul, but maybe they made a mistake here, maybe they made a mistake there. But that, that's the dawa, then that is some place you want to be careful of. That is a place you want to be careful. So we're trying to give you those tools. 
uh, and the Chwadij, all they did is busy themselves with Tikfir. You don't want to be in a gathering that every other, every gathering, or any of the gatherings, is speaking about the leaders. That they're, the leaders are this, the leaders are that. This political issue happened, Morsi died, and we need to get involved in this. This one died, and this one was punished, this one was tortured, this one is this. Okay, those are realities. Those are things, but again, people need to build themselves to be a better ummah. How's the ummah going to get to the, all those bigger masail if you can't even reform yourselves and busy yourself with that which you can have a, a, a hand in changing? And that's first and foremost you and your community and your family. So don't be like the Khawarij. Also, be careful of those people who are always suspicious. The Prophet ﷺ said, Beware of suspicion. If everything they do Someone just told me, someone was speaking about somebody in Medina. He said, oh, so-and-so is jahil, so-and-so is this, but I benefited from so-and-so. So here's someone who didn't give you any evidence, didn't give anything to support what he said, but all he did was try to pull the lampshade over something that you were getting some light from. So you want to be careful of those kind of sittings and those kind of gatherings that people only warn you, but they don't give you any soul food. And soul food is that which is bringing you closer to Allah, Subhanahu wa ta'ala based on the son of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam and another thing you want to be aware of is people who and this also relates to that who just busy you with the mistakes of others and they don't busy busy you with teaching uh, another thing uh, with that is those people who haven't studied so i don't say that you don't if someone hasn't went overseas that you don't study with, that's not what we're saying. But we're saying everybody has a different level and everybody has a different exposure to knowledge. So you have to accept people for what they have to offer you. So if you see someone who's never studied, but they're talking about major Messiah, maybe they know Arabic. And maybe they're good at translating, and that's great. And maybe they're good and they have some relationship with some scholars. But often what you find is people like that, they make more mis many more mistakes because they didn't have, it wasn't that they sat under the beards and got steeped like tea. Because that really is a steeping like tea. When you sit with the ulama and various ulama, many ulama, not like one, two, three, four, five even, we're talking like 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s. When you have the chance to get in that tea and get brown, and get uh, you know immersed in that knowledge and that wisdom, and especially those major ulama like Imam Fozan, wa Luhaydan, wa Abdul Masan al Abad, wa Imam Shahimi, wa Kathir, wa Kathir, men whom that you you really get some insight. And there's so many others, uh, Muhammad Mukhtar Shankiti, he's an alam. Sheikh Abdul Masan said about him, he, he's an ayat in 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 fiqh. So there's many great uh, Ali Nasser Faqih, and we could just go on and on and on, and many mashaykh that are uh, that aren't on the you know uh, or uh, Imam uh, we'll see Allah Abbas and, and Kathir Kathir in Medina, so many mashaykh and ulama and Sheikhna Sheikh Ubaid and Sheikh Rabi and, and and so many other beneficial ulama, but you want to make sure that they're giving you the tarbiyah, those things, how to practice your religion and how to come closer to Allah. And not just busying you with issues that maybe you're even above your head. Uh, another criterion you want to look at is also, and th uh, these things kind of relate because they're related to Hizbiya. If you see people who are only who are always attacking the scholars, I mean, people who are like some of them aren't even known for being students of knowledge, and then they're just writing and talking about major scholars in the Muslim world. And major scholars of Ahlul Sunnah. I'm not talking about. Uh, they're talking about Qardawi. Even they, even a lot of people don't have the 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 level to be able to talk about Qardawi with knowledge. If they're just a student of knowledge, I would feel shame. I would say, okay, yeah, you know, I got this from the scholars. But to sit there myself and talk about some of these people that have a lot of knowledge, even if he's a mubtedia, you know, you want to have some wara, some some humbleness, and be careful. And what we find in this day and age, we have it's so easy for people to speak. We have so many du'at. And, and some of them, they're just belittling scholars like nothing. And I'm talking about really belittling scholars. Beware of false claims also. So 
this is very important that you want to be careful. I think all of this, it comes down to you want to make sure that you're benefiting from the people, that they're not just busying you with even scholars you've never heard of and you don't even have the ability to take from and they're telling you 57 reasons why you should boycott them or 57 reasons why they're a mubtidi and they've started such a new principle that it doesn't even affect your community, it doesn't affect your life, it doesn't affect your deen at all. So you want to be busy with that which is going to busy with you. If you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right now, you die. Do you think you're going to need to, you're going to be asked about this mubtadiya X, mubtadiya Y and Z? We're not saying that that's not important. That's an important aspect of knowledge of knowing who to take from and who not to take from. But the point is, is there ex there's excess with some people in warning and sometimes warning against Ahlul Sunnah. So that's the qa'id of a mubtadiya. So you want to be careful, even if someone says they're Salafi. And we've said this countless times, The reality of something is in its substance, not its name. Many people claim Salafiyyah. There's many Takfiris that claim Salafiyyah. Many Jihadis that claim Salafiyyah. Many Hizbis of various uh, shapes and sizes, they claim Salafiyyah. But their, usul, their foundation principles, sometimes their usul is not Salafi. And sometimes it's their actual methodology, their menhaj, for approaching the text, which is not Salafi, or it could actually be their menhaj on some issues that they're extreme, or their mumayya, as they say, they, they totally throw away the principles of Ahl Sunnah. So you got to be careful of all those things. Some people they don't regard, they totally cut out uh, uh, dealing with people of differences. Like they just, you know, no, we're just all Muslim. That's really. That goes against an usul, an important usul foundation of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is refuting Ahl Bid'ah. That's a part of Ahl Sunnah. And it's a very important part of preserving our religions. How our religion was preserved up to now because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose men and created men who preserved the religion by refuting Ahl Bid'ah wa Ahl Zandaka. And now we have Kathra. So it's still important to refute. But you want to make sure that it's based on knowledge. You want to make sure people are busying you with that which is going to bring you closer to Allah and that they're not excessive, not they're not tajawas. Because tajawas means you're going beyond the saratullahi mustaqim. You're going beyond the straight path. You, that's not going to benefit you. It doesn't matter if you went beyond. You want to be on the saratul mustaqim. The Prophet ﷺ, he drew a line in the sand. Khatta lana Rasulullah Allah. The Prophet ﷺ, he drew a line in the sand. He said, Have a sabil Allah. So he drew a straight line in the sand. He grew on the right and he grew on the left. And he said, Have a subul. He said, These are the various paths. He said, At the end of every one of those paths, there's a devil. There are devils that are calling to their path. There's no shortcuts to the sunnah. There's no shortcuts to the sunnah. The only shortcut is following the book in the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu That is the steep path and the minhaj of the Salaf al-Salih. Allahi alayhim. May Allah bless us with tawfiq to be of those people. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah forgive us of our many sins. Ameen. So important, Habitifillah, make sure that someone is calling you to good. Make sure that they are teaching you something. Make sure that they're trying to give you the tools to raise you up, raise you up in your community and bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's about the most general advice I can offer you. And stay away from uh, deviance and hezbiyah and wasting time. If you find someone that's wasting your time, they're not benefiting you, they're not teaching you to be a better Muslim, then that, that's not a gathering you want to stick around for. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.